All right. <clears throat> Looks like people are starting to join. Sean, are you in? Sean's joining. I'm here. All right. All right. Okay. This is just, uh, this is our second Valence Developer Diaries. Uh, it's a continuation from last week because we started working on creating uh, an app, the NAB, or the NAB app that is going to be app usage in Valence. Um, I think we probably just go over what we did, kind of a quick review. Um, that video is on our YouTube, on CNX's YouTube channel from last week. And again, we're going to record these sessions and then put them on the YouTube channel. Uh, what do you think, Sean? How do you want to start this? You want to, do we start with the uh, wire? Maybe let's just, yeah, let's just look at those wire frames again, just to see what we've done and what we're going to do today. All right. I just stop sharing. Okay. I'll share my screen here. Okay, you see that? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. All right, so this is, basically this is what we accomplished last week. Uh, we have this first landing screen. Um, and now we're gonna work on the detail. So when they Indeed. click an app or click any of these chart elements, we're gonna swap to this screen, which will show a pivot grid, uh, another grid with you know all the detail behind that, and then a back button to go back. So, right. I'm going to, I'm going to stop screen sharing. I'll, I'm going to hand it back to you here. Okay. All right. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, great. All right. So let me just, uh, I guess this was the original, this is the current app usage in the portal, which we were going to create something through NAB. And this is where we're at today with it from our last session. And if you were watch the last session, we have a form for searching. We have just a list of the apps, and then we have two charts. Um, the only behaviors that we really linked in was filtering those widgets via the search, and that's pretty much it. So now we need to go into the detail. Um, let's. And then here's the current state of all the items that we've created, the data source and the widgets. Um, I don't know, we really shouldn't need to go through all of these again, but um, the initial data source for the apps themselves, the list, our chart. Um, then also here's our pivot grid that we did start and we're gonna continue on today. And here's our filter form and then our other chart. And then this users was a data source to drive the drop down in our search form. Let's go into app, the pivot grid. So right away, I think we probably shouldn't add some more fields so the user can adjust the pivot grid if they want to. And also we probably need those for filtering. Yeah, so basically any field that you click available means that it's available for the user if 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 you they, if if we're allowing them to configure the pivot grid um on their own which we set that option that's one of the configure options and then it also makes it available for filtering as well so that's why we're adding these making these more fields available here just for more flexibility okay, i know that we definitely want the app id Month is good, I'd say. Day, I mean, if they really want to get down to. You know, right. Uh, user ID is probably useful to have in there for filtering. Right. And Eight, I don't know if we really need it. Uh, yeah, sure. Mode, I don't. Oh, that, that should be good, right? I think so. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go to our app. Let's introduce so this, is, this. Yeah, and this is probably a good a good talking point about um, you know adding a new widget in here. Um, we you know we'll see 
customers create applications and they'll put all of their widgets in this main section and then just hide and show them, uh, you know, based on various clicks or behaviors. And really a, a better approach would be to separate things by sections. It's easier to manage uh, and it just, it just gives you that, that, that separation. Right. So, so we're just gonna add a new section. We'll call it detail. Okay, now we can see that we have nothing in this detail section. And the one widget we wanna add is the pivot grid. Okay. That we probably should add that other app variable for the app ID. So when they're coming from main, yeah. Yeah. And they're clicking on it, so we have that reference. So yeah, we're just so gonna add, go ahead. Well, yeah, we, we elected to create app variables. Um, and then as the user navigates in the application, clicks things, we're populating those app variables. Um, we didn't necessarily have to go this route. Uh, we just chose to because I think it just, it makes it easier. It's a more uniform approach. I'm not concerned about, you know, field names and, and, and that sort of thing when I'm filtering. I just, I'm just using my app variables. All right. So let's go into behavior so we can link this in. So I'd say the first thing is when we, when the user clicks on this list of apps, I, I want to see the, the detail behind it in the pivot grid, right? Right. So the first so this, thing, go ahead. Yeah, and th this will be kind of, you know, this will be somewhat of a, of a more complicated filter because we might have filters coming from the form. Right. And then we know we're going to have a filter, you know, coming from the click of that, that, that grid. And that grid is definitely going to have the app ID. So we're limiting by app ID. And then we're potentially limiting by to date, from date, from and date, to date, and user ID. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is probably just set the app bars. Yeah. So app ID, if I click in the value field, you'll see this magnifier, which will bring up the available fields. And I want that app ID. Good. And Excellent. that should be it for that. Because from date to date and user ID, those may or may not be populated. That's populated from our search event. On right. The filter form. This is where we set those yep. app variables here. Okay, and the next thing is, Filter the widget. I want to filter the pivot. So the left hand side that shows that's the data source from the pivot grid. We know we want to filter by app ID. And then we're going to use the app variable of app ID. And then we also want from date. So it's a good thing you added that uh, date that, that date in there. So we're going to go yep, with from date, and then it needs to be greater than or equal to. And you could just click that, and it'll toggle through the operators. And then we want date is less than or equal to to date. And then last, we're going to set the user ID equal to the user ID. Mm -hmm. Is right here equal to the user. So we know in this, at least in this case, that that first condition, we know we're going to have app ID. We don't know about the other three. I, I don't know if the form is populated at this right. point or not. So that's what the rules section is for. This one for sure, we always want to apply app ID we're going to have. Yep. These apply if not blank. Yep. I don't know. Perfect. That's it. Okay. We might want to update the, the, the app bar as well as yeah. the app list, just of the name of the application that we're viewing. Sure. Okay. Just the name. That looks good. Mm -hmm. And then we want to Now we want to swap sections. So, right. and here's here's a really good 
example of why it's best to use sections because now I don't need to go through my main list and, and find, you know, it could get pretty big and, you know, determine which widget to hide and show. I'm just going to click, or Johnny's just going to click right on the main section. It toggles all of them. He wants to hide everything and he wants to show everything in the detail section. Right. Um, and notice when he clicks show, we have that key app usage, keep data. That could be toggled as well. In this case, we don't want to, we want to load the data. At that point, we want to load data. And then it's also nice to note that if I'm using sections, this show and hide, like let's just say this hide of the main and then the showing of the detail. If later down the road, if I add a widget to any section, it will automatically then do that same behavior. So if I added something to detail later, it's going to show that in detail. So you don't have to come back and adjust your, yeah, your that's a good point. actions. Okay, so we have the hide show. And then I guess with that stated, do we deal with navigation for this section of detail or do we just run it for right now? Uh, yeah, let's run it for right now. Okay. Let's do it in steps. Okay, so now when we launch this, we reload this app, when he clicks on that list of apps, it should swap to that new section and it should be, it should filter that pivot grid to only that application. So just take the first one. Um, yep. And then let's just, just to test it, let's filter by one of those users. Oh, we don't have a way to get back now. Have, yeah, the navigation <laughs> we need to deal with. But we do, we do see that the app bar did change, so now we're looking at portal admin, what we drilled into, so. I think this is a good step just to get, I need to get back to, to main. By the way, we, we can tweak that look of the, uh, pivot grid a bit it didn't it wasn't yeah it didn't, didn't seem optimized there but you know maybe that's for a that's that you we changed time. that when we created it yeah. um okay so now that we have two different sections and i moved to the different sections i moved to detail from main i need to be able to get back so this is where we would just create a button for the section itself and for this we usually wouldn't do text uh, and this is all preference here. So we're just, we typically any time, well, not typically, every time we're doing back functionality, we always choose the same icon and we always put it in the same position. Uh, you know, we, we're not saying you have to use this one, but whatever you do for back functionality, you know, it's good to be consistent. To always choose the same icon or to always choose the same text. Right. Okay, so then what are we doing? This one's easy. It's just, we're just gonna hide show. Right, we're just doing exact opposite of what we did before. Right. All right. And then, you know, I just thought of this is that our app bar is going to be wrong. So when we go back. Oh, the app bar title. Yeah. So I want to I want to set it to previous. So this is nice that I can just go back to whatever it was initially. Not to worry about anything else. So we were initially setting it when we went from main and drilled into the app list and going into the to see the details in the pivot grid. We changed the app bar title to the name of the app. We just want to revert back. Okay, let's see how this is looking. I'm just going to go in the same thing, Portal Admin. Okay, we see our back, and we're back in there, and app usage is back in. Okay. Okay, now we need to wire up the top active apps and the top active user clicks to do the same thing. Right. Should we quickly just change that pivot grid? I wasn't really fond of that. Sure. Yeah. And I'm just going to change it from outline to compact. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> so now this setup is going to be really similar. Well, actually, identical, I guess. <laughs> I think. So I'm coming from top active apps on Shark Click. I'm set the app bars. Yep, I'm going to set the app bars first. And really, all we have at that point is app ID. That's it. Save. And then I want to filter the widget. So let's filter that pivot. And this is going to be pretty much the same. I'm going to go app ID to my app bars of app ID. And then <clears throat> I'm doing date from date. And then I'm doing one more for my two date. And then of course user. And then we need to do the same thing for rules. From date to date and user only if applied. Okay. Oh, set at bar title as well. Right. App name. And then the exact, I'll just go hide and show. And load data. Yep. Okay. I might as well just do the other chart while we're here, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, the last one here. Ooh, did not want that. And just a reminder. Oh, right, we don't have, I, I, I'm, we don't have, I'm going for app ID in this one. In this oh, one, right. we don't have, we don't have right. Because this is top users. Yep. So in this case, we're just. User ID. And just a reminder, if you got, if anybody has questions as we go along, you know, don't be afraid to throw anything in the chat. That's a good point. All right, so now this one is a little different because I don't have an app ID. So we will not be doing app ID. We will be doing, let's just do user first, user to our user and then really it's the exact same based yep. on that filter from date and then to date. And the rules for this one, I mean, we're coming from somewhere where we always have the user ID, so that should always apply and these should be only applied if not blank. And an app bar title and... This one's gonna be different. This would probably be... So not user, and so user ID is the actual numeric and then login ID is the... That's the what I want. ...name behind it, yep. Now for right now, I'll just leave it, just the, that ID in there for the app bar. And then we want to hide show widgets and do the same thing. Hide, show, no data. Okay, I think that's it for those two. Yep. Okay, so let's just do uh, app builder click. App nice. Builder. nice. Okay, sweet. Good. And then let's go from to user. So now we should see a breakdown of all the applications that yep. the users. And there we go. Perfect. Excellent.
Okay. All right. So I think the next thing is to incorporate that last widget in the detail screen. That was, we want to have a list, another list. Yeah. So we're going to show the pivot. Yeah, it's the actual detail behind that pivot grid. Okay. So I shouldn't need another, I already have this data source, so I'm just gonna reuse that same data source. There's no re reason for me to have, to create another data source for this list, right? I mean. Oh, that sounds, that sounds accurate to me, I think, yeah. Okay. All right. And so you can see that, um, you can see my screen still, right? Yep. Okay, great. All right, so then I guess what do we really? I think all we really want is maybe a. Um, just the app and. You know, yeah, the app with the, you know, maybe the icon and the, uh, the, the icon that goes along with it. Right. Um, and then. Then the date and the user. Well, so login so ID, right? Yeah, you know what? Since we have the information, maybe we also yep. show did they come in from the desktop portal or the or the mobile portal? Because right. we have that mode there, and we could create that as a renderer and then just show an icon that yep. represents desktop versus mobile, or even put a tooltip on it as well. I'm gonna use bring this up, and I know that. I already have this renderer stuff. So this is gonna be for the styling of showing the, the icon on there. So formatting, I'm gonna do custom formatting. This is pretty much the exact same thing as we did in our first session on that yeah. main list. So I'm just pasting this in. And I think that looks correct. And I'm gonna see if it does or not. Okay, great. And maybe that timestamp, we put a render on that to just yeah. make it a bit more friendly. So for, you know, for, for dates and timestamps, you know, typically you'll be able to find in the formatting, you won't have to do a custom format. Um, mm -hmm. The built-in formatters, we should have something to accommodate. And if we don't, uh, you know, you could always just request it. There we go. There's my timestamp. So this is what the value is in that in, in the record for that field, and then this is what we want it to be. So I'm, I'm going to set it to this. And then how about mode? Let's get mode because I know that I have. Yeah, that'd be good. Mode, and I have markup for that to just put in there. I'm gonna say right away, I know that this is gonna be small. We don't really need to have a column heading in it. And I'm gonna set this. So here we're just doing some markup and, and as Sean said too, we're also doing a little bit of a tool tip too. We're setting a tool tip to be displayed. All right, let's just go to the configure and just see how are we doing here. So right away I can see that like- Center that. Center that. Um, yeah, for sure, son of that. And are we missing anything? Let's see, how, how are we looking here? I mean, say that looks pretty good. Yeah, it's fine. For a start at least. Right, okay. I think we have a question. What's the tipping point of relative width to absolute width? Uh, I don't know if I understand exactly, but I think um, basically if, if, if Johnny goes back into the columns section there, um, so you can see that there's width slash flex and, and basically flex is a weighting system. So maybe, maybe a good quick demonstration. If, if we just have only two columns, if we only show two columns, let me just move this. <clears throat> let me just move this up, and then I will remove those, so it's easy. So I'm going to take off these two. And if we I'm put an equal, 
Yeah, if we put an equal flex of one, one. So by the way, if the number is 10 or less, we treat, we treat it as flex, which means a weighting scale. So now <clears throat> each one is given the same weighting. So it's 50% and 50%. So now if he were to change one of those to a two and we'd have one and two, then one's gonna be 33 and a third, the other's gonna be 66 and two thirds. Right. So if, if, if Johnny were to take one of those fields and make it, let's say 30, because it's more than 10, we're gonna treat that as 30 pixels. I just did 50, just so I can see it still. And then the other flex fields are gonna take up the rest of the space. I don't know if that answers your question. And then also, I guess I like to note that if you don't use any flex, if everything is oh. above 10 and you're not using flex at all, then you're only gonna see those columns in that width. So it might not take the full screen or it could take up and you'll get horizontal scroll. Cause I said, you know, I've got 10, 10 columns here and I've made the width so large that it needs a scroll. So you'll have horizontal scrolling within your list. So we always, we always recommend against any horizontal scrolling. Um, and you know, I mean, there, maybe there's a very special circumstance, but you know, typically it's, it's, it's not a, you know, at least in our opinion, not a great thing for the user to have to scroll horizontally. Right. In, in a grid. Okay. Two and 80 and then I already have it center aligned. Oh, maybe okay. just change that those labels too. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Um, so, and remember this is where, you know, we showed last time you could press F4 in there and access literals. Right, so let me do that for this one. I know we have the letter for user. User, user ID, I guess. Yep. And then uh, this would just be the, the date. I don't know what, really what we'd want in here, date. Date. Perfect. Uh, no, do we have? I'm just sure we have a little for that. We gotta have one for date. Date. App name, I know that we have one for that. Hmm. App. All right. Yeah, where is it? There it is. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. So we have app, we have those. Mode we're leaving. I, I, we don't want to put it. That yeah. just seems odd. So let's just end it with here. So then now we see this. I, I don't know. I'm pretty okay. happy with it. For if right you now. hover over that mode, it's showing the tooltip, right? Yes. So. We're getting the desktop. It would be desktop or mobile. Okay. So. All right. Um, paging. Um, you know, I don't want to sit at 25. I'm going to change. I'm gonna, you know, and I, in this case. Um, this one could be pretty large. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. It could be large, though. I mean, I'm just going to sit at the max. Yeah, this has the potential to maybe have, you know, tens of thousands of right. records. So, so we, we do want to page it. Okay. All right. All right. I think that should be it for right now, right? Yeah. Okay. So now we're just going to take this widget and we're going to incorporate it into that detail section of our application. And again, we're, I'm using a tag. We just use tags usually for organizational purposes. Okay. Now let's bring this thing in. Okay, and then <clears throat> we're gonna go, now we're gonna go to our detail section again, because that's where we want it. And I'm gonna say add widgets. And I'm going to pick our detail list. And by default, it's always going to add it in the canvas area to the bottom, but we don't, we don't want it, we want it brought up. And again, we want to fix the margin. So the goal here is to have equal margins yep. throughout. So I can easily just do zero here. And I think that's good for now. And then now we just need to get that thing wired up. So, First, let's just do the list. We need to filter that widget. Detail list. 
Okay, so app ID to app ID. And then here we're back at the same where we don't know if user ID is being used or not, but we will set it. And then do I not have date? Date. From date. And due date. And am I missing anything? I don't think so, right? Oh, just the rules. Okay. All right, that's always, this is only apply if not blank. Sweet. Um, should I just check for right now or do you want me to try to whip through those other, the chart? Uh, your call, your call. Yeah, let's just, let's just make sure this worked. Let's introduce a new widget, so. Yeah, we'll, we'll typically create things in very small steps. You know, it's it's constant, you know, add something, bring it in, reload. Right. Rather than do too much and realize you may have done something wrong. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just do App Builder. All right, perfect, so we see App Builder. Nice. And you're gonna well, notice that, yeah, it's redundant to have the app in there because we're already looking at it, but they could come from another section which would be like just for this specific user and you'll see all those different apps all right let's wire we'll just yep. now wire up both other charts all right on the click i'm going to do a filter i'm going to filter our new list App ID to App ID. Date. So we, we recognize that you know some of this stuff here is redundant and you know right because it's like I've done the same thing and future versions to, you know, maybe say, well, you know, apply this same filtering to multiple widgets at once. But for now, this is how we have to do it. Yeah, almost like if we could label the, the filter or something and then just have it ID'd. Okay, that's our top active apps. And now I just gotta do active users and we should be done with this list. Oh, so that one doesn't have this that one. Right. Yeah, this isn't going to have it. Yeah. So nice it's user list. ID to user ID. And then date. From date to date. And then we know user ID needs to always be applied. Okay. All right, let's see if this does what we want. So I already like this app usage app better than the one that comes in the portal for sure. I mean, yeah, I think that the, it is a little better. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we got our QSAC. So we did that for the A users. Now top apps, so we'll see, make sure that that shows for app usage, sweet. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan just said, yes, it is better. Actually, uh, Ryan is the inspiration for this one. <laughs> yeah, Ryan was. Yeah, he, he actually asked for something better in, in uh, app usage and what was there. So yeah, this was, this was sweet. So the, here is our final app usage from NAB. Um, Probably could, I don't, know, I don't know what else I would do with it. Well, now, now, now maybe we add a bit of security to this too, just, okay. maybe just for demonstration's sake. Um, okay. Because recently in, well, I don't know how recent, maybe in the last four months or so, 
within App Builder. Um, you, we, we can add security now as well. Now, does that mean, is it for the whole app or? Uh, it could be, it's just for, in, well, for the whole, the whole app, then we'd go to portal administration and just say, look, you don't have access to this app if you're not in that group. But in this case, we can, um, we can turn on and off certain features of the application. So for this you're one, saying, but th this is specific to the, like the application itself. It's not like the security that we have for NAB, like some users can create data sources or widgets or apps. Right, 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 right. It's to, to the app. So, you know, for example, um, let's say if I'm a, if I'm an administrator, I should be able to come in here and I should be able to clear all the, all the app usage data. Um, so I might create a button to clear all the data and I would only um, make that visible if, if I was, if the user using the app was part of the admin group. Why don't we make that our. <laughs> okay. So do you want me to add a new button to like probably just the main section? Yep, add a button, add a button to the main section. All right. And let's call it clear all data. Clear all data, perfect. Okay, um, I guess we might as well wire this up. So we're gonna quickly get into some RPG. Uh, okay, so here, here we're calling an RP, we're gonna call an RPG program, right? Yep. Okay. So I don't know how many, you know, well, I guess we'll just assume that people haven't seen this. Um, that question mark there, if you click that, that gives, that shows the template for an RPG program. So basically we should be copying this template and then putting in our own, our own code. All, it looks like a lot in here because there's a, uh, there's a lot of uh, help text in here, but basically we're gonna scroll down okay. and just keep going. And you're gonna see there's a special procedure in here called process and that's where we're gonna put our code. Uh, I see where it's being called. So place your code within the process procedure. Yep. So basically all we're going to do here is we're going to create an RPG program that's just going to do a simple SQL statement and delete um, the records from our VV app log file and then send back a response. Um, okay, so. cool. All right. Are you going to sure. create the RPG program and tell me the yeah. name you want to use? Oh, okay. Um, How about, uh, yeah, whatever let's you call it. Let's call it app usage CLR for clear. Uh, is that USG? No. USG CLR. USG CLR. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay. Maybe just to show, open Great. that additional details. Okay. So when they click this, we're going to mask the screen and maybe let's put a text, a mask test of, you know, clearing all data. <laughs> So and basically then I could when change they click the that button, the RPG is called, it's going to mask the screen with the text that Johnny's putting in here. And here's the timeout for that call. Default timeout is always 30 seconds. So if for some reason you're, you're back, your call to your RPG program is take, needs it more time than that, you can always adjust the seconds before it times out. Um, the mask, you can do application, the whole portal, or none. So that means when the call is happening, it'll by default mask the application. So the application meaning right here, anything below that white bar, let's say, that's our current app, the current app we're running. But you could say, I wanna mask the whole portal. So everything is masked. They can't switch apps or anything until this call is done or none. Um, and then also there's some other options here where you can pass an action, right? So I can reuse, I can have the same pro, RPG program and I'm doing multiple things with it. So I pass an action that you could pull in and then decide on what to do. All right, that should be good, right, for now? Yep, that's all we need. Okay. Um, so let's just, so, uh, you know, maybe we'll, let's, let's get the RPG for this now and then we'll introduce the security just so we have this working. Okay, let me just save this so it's there. And then do you want me to just make you presenter? You're gonna, to the sure. RPG? Okay, perfect. I will stop sharing. And it's on you. Okay.
So I'm just going to go to a green screen here and uh, let's see here. Maybe my, let me reconnect here. Okay, let me just get my library set up. Okay, so I'm just going to go to a green screen and I'm going to copy that EX nab button program. So I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to call it app usage clear. That's what, that's what we named it on the front end. Uh, so let me just go in here and I'm just going to page all the way down. I'm going to get rid of everything, all this sample code and process. If this, we don't have enough time to really explain everything that you can do in here, but I'll give the basics. Um, I'm just going to do a SQL set. Option commit equals star none. And then exec SQL delete from VB app log. Yep. That's all I need. Okay. So then I'm going to send back a response of true. And I will basically, I can set various things here. Um, if I send info, it's going to pop up a little message here. So I'll just say all data has been cleared and then the other thing i could do is i could tell all of the widgets on the screen to refresh themselves so i'm just going to pass refresh true okay and that's it i'm going to compile this note on the compiles the notes in there but i need to have a compile option here of this rpg preprocessor options of level two to make sure, okay. Okay, um, so we should have that now. Now I'm just gonna go and, let me go in here. Yeah, it's just it's already ready, gonna, just do it. Okay, okay. Should I do it and clear all the data? How about we, no. All right, let me get yeah, let's screen. add the security because then, okay. then once you clear the data, everything's gone. We'll have to start clicking apps like crazy. So yeah, if we can just add that security, you're, like you said, for the button itself. Yep. Okay, so here, this is security. So I'm gonna click here. And basically we see the same view that we get, you know, for behaviors, okay? I'm just collapsing this, but notice on any of these things, as I, as I expand them down, I could enter a feature name on there. So I just need to give the functionality a name. Like for this clear all data, I'm just gonna call it allow clear all data, okay? So now I have the ability to turn this feature on and off, okay? I can do that through, there's several ways, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna use initially a startup program. So there's a program, an RPG program that we can attach to this application that will be called upon startup. Here's a really simple example. If the user is Tom, disable some feature, okay? Same concept here. I click this, it gives me the, you know, the template that I should be copying from, okay? So I'm just gonna copy from exnab start. I'm gonna call this app USG uh, STRT for start, okay? So let me just go and copy that. So VX nab start. I'm going to copy this. App USG start. Okay. So here, we're only going to focus on one of the helper procedures, disable feature. And just like the other one, there's just a process um, procedure that we should put our code in. So basically, all I want to do, let me just test it first. Disable feature, um, allow clear all data. So basically, I'm just disabling it all the time. Let me compile this. And let me just save this. So now when I reload this, I expect to not see this button. Dun, dun, dun. 
Nice. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so now let's put some uh, real code behind it. Um, so we said, if the user belongs to the admin group, show it. So let me just go to groups because I know there's an admin group. I just want to get the ID of the admin group. Number two. Okay. And I'm logged in as QSEC offer right now, which does belong to the admin group. Uh, let me just verify that. I'm sure we do. So we're in the admin group. So I'm going to use a helper procedure in valence. Let me just create a variable first. L admin group ID. Make it a 10. I oop. initialize it to two. I'm just going to hard code it. If VV secure is member of L admin group ID. Actually, I want to say if not. If it's if I'm not a member of it, then disable the feature. So VV Secure is member is just a helper procedure that just goes out. You pass the group ID, it pulls the current user and says true or false, they're a member of this group or not. Compile. Okay. So now if I reload this, I'd expect to see the button. Okay, so now I have the button. And let me just go into portal admin and let me go, I'll, I'll put the Langtree user here and I'm gonna remove myself from the admin group and save that. Oh, save. Okay. So now I'm gonna log out, log in as Langtree who is not part of the admin group. And expect not to see it. Good, it's not there. Sweet. And just one more time, I'm gonna now I'll just go in as QSEC offer and I'll actually click that button just to remove the data, just to verify that that works. App usage. And maybe before we do that, just you really quickly. What's that, John? Um, when you're gonna do this, the button call, I don't know if it's worthwhile, but you, well, I was gonna say, do we bring up dev tools just to show the things that maybe are past? Yeah, that's a good idea. We need to like, are curious what they could pull in. And because we're gonna make this a valence app, I'm just gonna change the, the theme on it to be more like the valence colors that are used for the base apps. Okay. I'm just gonna save that. So reload this. Now it should look more like the other valence applications. Okay, so I have the button. I'm gonna bring up DevTools just for anyone who cares so we can see what gets passed when we click this. But basically we should see, when we click this, we should see that mask come up and then we should see every widget on the screen refresh and have no data in it. So here we go. All right, so that worked. And where is our call? Here's our call. So this is what is passed. It called program app usage CLR. It passed us all the app variables, the state of all the app variables. Um, and really that's it. it this, 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 what gets sent here depends on where the button's attached. If the button were attached to a grid, it would give us information about the grid, like what rows are selected. If it was passed to a form, it would give us information of what are the, what's the state of all those fields. And you'll find within that EXNAB BTN uh, template, there's all sorts of procedures in there to, to pull the data that gets passed in here. Like there's a get app var or there's a get form selection and, and, and those sorts of things. And there's ways for, 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 for me on my RPG program to, to respond back and set like application variables and, and such, right? That's right. That's right. So now I should have the data in here for the one call. <laughs> Excellent. Please. All right. So that was a quick thing about uh, security. Okay.
Well, I think that's, that's good for this session. Um, I guess I'd like to state um, if anyone has any um, suggestions. Making you back the presenter if need be. Oh, okay. If anyone has any suggestions on content that they'd like to, us to go over, uh, feel free to, uh, you can always send it to support at cnxcorp.com. Um, and also, for people that are viewing this, maybe that didn't join, but are viewing it on our, the YouTube channel because we're recording these all the time. If you go to cnxcorp.com and you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a place where you can get updates. If you just put your email address in here, you'll get our monthly newsletter and updates for the Valence Developer Diaries too. So if you just put your email address in there, you can sign up for that. Um, we have about 10 minutes. I would, you know, we just did a, a new update for Valence 5.2 plus. Maybe it's a good idea, you know, we just quickly walk through the, the bullet points that we have on the form and actually talk about it being there. Maybe some people don't know about that. Um, on our form, each time we, we do a new update, we list the things that are part of that update, either features, bug fixes, et cetera. Um, we just released one, what was it, Sean? Yes, yesterday was it actually? Uh, was it two days ago? Maybe two days ago. Yeah. 15th, yeah. Oh, 15th, 15th. So I don't know, do we want to walk through quickly, just kind of? Yeah, maybe the top bullet points really are. Go ahead. Um, I know I say the, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be doing a, a session on this, but there's, you can now do scripting within NAB apps. Basically you could put in your own JavaScript to do things. Um, and then the, probably the second thing to mention too is uh, the portal now supports two factor authentication. Um, if you want to add that security to it for all your users. Uh, then, you know, I guess what, just 50, 50, 50, 50 uh, changes there, copy paste supporting various improvements. Uh, and then, you know, a couple bug fixes in there too, probably. Perfect. All right. Well, we'll just, we'll have our next uh, session next Friday at 10 uh, central. And uh, thanks for everybody joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.